I will put cotton eyes in there to replace the real eyes, the blueberries. <laughs> So I know from the skull this bird was indeed an adult, and I will record that so we don't forget, never trust our memories. Now something that has been found out in this area are hybrids between western tanagers and scarlet tanagers. If it's a male bird that shows up real obviously the, the two parental types. And I'm going to put up a little cotton up in the top of the crown of the bird. Okay, now. Okay. Oh. Go to the old stick routine. Make ourselves a body. Yeah, about the about the size of the original body. Pretty mm -hmm. close. Should go. You don't get that spread until you get all the free stuff. Yeah. You're breathing free air. There we go. I've got a lot stuck in the roof of the mouth. Now, this bird, because it's molting, is not a very smooth, suave looking specimen if it was in complete plumage, but still, we learn a lot from specimens like this. Yeah, that's neat to see. They made themselves look like this. We didn't. Mm -hmm. We didn't. Uh, Now we're, we're doing study skins. A little okay. cotton up in the throat, and then I'll sew the bird up. Now, where, where, where do you get? Who do you get them to? The Bell Museum or someplace like that? No, we I'll, use them as study skins out here, oh, okay. and at the Science Museum, they have an extensive collection. Oh, okay. And I worked at the Bell Museum for many years. Oh, uh, you did? Yeah, I prepared yeah. thousands of their specimens. Oh, boy. Yeah, I remember looking at quite a few over there. Yeah. Do you get any raptors uh, at all or no? Oh, yeah, we do. Okay, Lee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get windows. Fact, my friend brought in a raptor house the other day. Not a raptor, but a raptor house. From here in the, uh, yeah. in, the, in the nature center? Yeah. Mm. Boy, over the years, I found the grouse really declined out here greatly. Oh, they didn't find no, it out it here. No, it wasn't out here. No, oh. it had. It was at her daughter's. It 
was on the driveway in the morning, and it, it, there was a little mark on its beak, so we don't know whether it hit the window or it was hit by a car or something. I had one hit my car window when I worked at Wilder there way back in yeah. the Yeah, there used to be many and, more yep, grouse around yep. here. Boy, yeah. Every winter. And I think the mistake of being, that one of the mistakes is introducing Turkey, so I think it's a very biological mistake. For Do you think so? Oh, you turkeys know, uh, were never native here. Yeah, but no, I, I would think that it's the food source that would uh, diminish the no, population. No, they compete with uh, grouse, and, and they do a lot of damage to corn crops. They're going to be a pest from one yeah. goal, and they do destroy uh, the nests of other ground nesting birds. Hmm. So, now, wh what, what bird is that you're working on This now? is a scarlet tanager. Oh, okay. Yep. It's a male that's molting into its fall plumage, and the uh -huh. summer will be all red with black wings. Okay. How did he make it to your table here? What's that? How did he make it to your table here? Well, let's see, via a uh, window kill, I window, suspect. Yeah. Yeah. Most of these, I, I, I guess. Uh, some of them are written down on on the sheets, you know, the mode of death. Some of them are Just car down. road kills, who knows. But yeah. window that's, kills seem to be the most. Jay, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Window kills tend to be the most numerous source for songbirds. Mm. Yeah, that's true because uh, in, I guess in some of the places they just run right into. Yeah, windows. yeah. They don't. It appears like clear air. Right? Yeah. For the most part, and yeah. uh, some of these birds are also night migrants too, and they're confused by lights and uh, uh, some of them navigate by starlight, and they're uh -huh. confused by. On cloudy nights or rainy nights, particularly, they take a heavy slack and cause the ground lights confuse them. Yeah, disrupt their celestial navigation. Mm -hmm. Now, what's what's the largest animal you worked on? Well, I've in the bird world, I've done ostriches, and uh, <laughs> in the mammal world, you have done things like leopard seals that are up to fourteen hundred oh, pounds. Geez. And, a leopard uh, seal? Leopard seal. I worked on Antarctica quite a bit for several years. And I worked on pen penguins and seals, but yeah. you wouldn't prepare those. You wouldn't prepare the whales and seals like this, of course. Yeah, but that that must be awful difficult because that's oh, yeah. nothing but blubber. Oh, right? they're total fat and grease, and yeah. every time I skinned one, you know, I'd, we'd bring back some of the specimens and prepare them up here. Uh -huh. And every time I did that, my clothes would get all greasy and oily, and the, every dog in the countryside would nearly attack me. <laughs> They love I have to throw away some clothes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You that thing that can't bond to you. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> then I've worked on some rotting stuff. And, oh, mm. anything but pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. So is it just a matter of removing the internal organs and that's, it doesn't... This is the inside. It's the whole body. Yeah. Everything that spoils is out of this bird. And it doesn't decompose any further? No, no. The skin will not rot. The skin will be nice and dry, it'll just dry up on its own accord because I took all the fat and all the uh, obnoxious tissues away. Okay, so now that may not be the prettiest bird, but it's a valuable one from the standpoint of... See, if you learn how to sew, you can do that. Yeah, I, I can do a few basic stitches, yeah. Now I'm gonna tie the legs across the stick so the legs don't dangle and break. Then I will tie the beak shut as well. So if we want to measure beaks and legs and so on, that we always do them in a standard fashion. Okay, and always tie the bird's left leg over his right leg because to standardize which legs we measure, the bird's legs, a bird's leg on a left side may be different in measurement than the bird's on the right side, just like our feet. Our feet are different sizes often. And not not really noticeably so, but enough that you can measure actual differences. And the same is true of the bird's wing. The right wing and the left wing don't measure exactly the same. So you play around in circles then? Yeah, yeah, I don't think that much anyway. They could. Okay, one beak to tie up here, and then we'll wrap up the bird and start on another one. How long you been doing this? I started doing this when I was eight years old on the farm, and I'm just 16 now, so <laughs> plus or minus. You look good. <laughs> so do you have a background in biology? Or yeah, biology, geography, mm -hmm. zo zoology. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 
So what are you gonna do, what are you gonna do when you grow up? Ah, uh, well, I'm more of the same probably. As long as I can keep, keep walking and seeing, I'll do it. You know, I'm a biologist. I work at the Science Museum, of course. And manage, try to manage our biological collections and prepare, and I do field research. I've done it with the DNR and Fish and Wildlife Service. One of the interesting things that just came about, the DNR contacted me recently, and there's apparently something has risen among the wolves that there are two species of timber wolf, a, a gray wolf and a timber wolf, and they are separated on the basis of DNA, but they're still trying to find out what morphological differences are that they can distinguish up on site, hmm. which is very interesting. And they want me to clean up a whole bunch of skulls for them. And, <laughs> they want to get, have at least 400 skulls to uh, uh, to analyze and.